The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for this webinar. My name is JC Ripiger, and I'm the Marketing Coordinator at ISAC. Today, I'm happy to introduce to you an ISAC-endorsed company called No Wait Inside. No Wait Inside is a cloud-based technology solution that combines online scheduling, customer communications, contact tracing, and an efficiency dashboard in a simple and intuitive application to allow governments to safely and efficiently offer face-to-face -face and virtual services to its citizens. No Wait Inside solves a number of problems, including the ability to reopen for many services that have not been offered since the beginning of the pandemic, and also by reducing overall infection risk by eliminating waiting rooms and waiting in line. Throughout this presentation, please feel free to send your questions through the chat feature and we'll address them all at the end. Now I'll turn this over to David Waxberg, Account Manager at No Wait Inside. Welcome, David, and thank you for joining us. Thanks, JC. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us on this webinar. As JC said, my name is David Waxberg. I'm one of the account managers here at No Wait Inside. Uh, it's great to be with you today. I uh, actually live in Chicago, so I am a neighbor of yours. Um, you know, I've been watching the news lately. Uh, I've been seeing that uh, some places in, in, in Iowa uh, have seen an increase in COVID cases. So uh, I think this webinar is uh, super critical uh, and important to, uh, to, to have today. I'm joined today by one of our co-founders, Mike Morasco. Mike is also a Chicago resident. He grew up in Chicago. Uh, he is on as well. He'll be here uh, for additional support. Uh, and he will be here to help uh, answer any questions as well. Um, we can go ahead and get started. Um, you know, when Jeff and his co-founder, uh, I'm sorry, when Mike and his co-founder Jeff, uh, you know, started this software just in April of this year, they realized that waiting rooms and waiting in line um, is going to be a thing of the past, uh, especially with COVID-19. And social distancing and wearing a mask is going to be with us for quite some time until there's a vaccine. You know, there's a lot of anxiety when uh, we have our employees coming into our county buildings or when we have our customers coming into our county builder buildings. And how do we get back to a new normal? The nice thing is, is um, with our software, we're able to address both customer and employee concerns. We know that customers are not going to come in and receive the services that they need from us if they don't feel safe. And our employees, too, won't come to work or they won't be productive if they don't feel like they can be safe either. So what we created is uh, something we're calling just-in-time servicing. So once one of your customers arrives near your facility, they can inform you that they're ready for service. And then using our dashboard, uh, the, your staff can alert them through a phone call and text message that's sent automatically from our dashboard that it's safe for them to come inside. So basically what we do at No Wait Inside is we are a scheduling and customer communications platform. Uh, we allow for residents and citizens to make time slot and walk-in appointments. Uh, we have our dashboard that we use to make those phone calls so staff doesn't have to use a desk phone, a mobile phone to text or a phone or call. We have an efficient dashboard that has complete reporting functionality that I'll show to you shortly as well. We're hosted on Amazon Web Services. It is a secure, reliable, and scalable uh, method of hosting all of the all, all of the data. When Mike and Jeff uh, built out this software, they realized that there was um, the possibility that uh, our partners in Health and Human Services or within the health department could use this software to um, make appointments for their uh, for their residents, and that's why it was built fully within within a HIPAA compliant environment. Jeff Gottstein is our CISSP on staff. He's a certified information system security professional. Uh, all of our encryption is fully up to date and up to the latest technology standards. Um, when it comes to scheduling within our application, there are two ways to do that. One of them is first in, first out. We call it FIFO, we call it a queue, we call it a couple different things. But the best way to think about first in, first out is um, how you would be serviced at the DMV, how you'd be served at a deli or at a bakery. You pull a number from the red machine that we've all seen, and then you are serviced in, um, in the order in which you come into the building. The other way to do that is from block scheduling. This is what you would see at the dentist's office, at a doctor's office. You make an appointment for a given period of time, and then once that those appointments are gone, then obviously other appointment times are available. Uh, in our software, you can have as many schedules uh, as you'd like. You can have as many appointments as you like, depending on the staffing model that you have uh, in your building. 
we find that our customers use our software for a variety of applications uh, from the treasurer, the recorder, the assessor, DMVs, healthcare. Uh, we're seeing a few um, uh, COVID-19 testing sites. We are talking to some county health departments that are thinking about using this for flu shot administration. That obviously can't be done telehealth. That has to be done in person. And so how are we going to inoculate folks with the flu vaccine in the coming months? Uh, we're finding that uh, the judiciary, traffic court, circuit court, jury duty, this is a great application for that as well. How do you bring a jury pool into the building? Uh, you can't have 200 people sitting in a courtroom at one time um, to go through that jury process. You need to bring in you know, a few at a time. Voter registration, that's obviously going to be on everyone's mind. I know mail-in uh, mail voting is going to be big this year, but how do you uh, accommodate those folks who want to come in and vote in person uh, in November? or even for early voting. Really anything that requires a face-to-face -face interaction, our software is a good use for that. Um, we are currently in uh, four counties in Iowa. Marion County was an early adopter of ours. They were one of our first customers. Worth County, Dubuque County, and Story County. Um, Story County is going to be a little bit delayed right now with, the, with, the, with their implementation, just because of a, a slight rise in COVID cases, uh, mostly because of, uh, of the students from Iowa State, um, and we're seeing a little bit of an uptick there. Um, we have one COVID testing site right now in Iowa. It is in Dubuque. It's called Epic Health and Wellness. Um, we are also obviously now partners with the Iowa State Association of Counties. Um, what I did today um, is I took a screenshot of Dubuque County's homepage. What you'll see here is there's a really large uh, call to action uh, message right in the middle. If you need to schedule an appointment, click here, right? And for them, they're using it for the city assessor, the county attorney, finance elections, GIS mapping, recorder, and treasurer. Once you click on that button, the next page that pops up is this. What you'll see is in the top left corner, it's going to ask you to pick your location. And it could be any of the ones I just listed. And on the right side, you'll, they'll, um, the customer or the resident will be able to put in the type of service that they need. In terms of the recorder's office, they're doing a, a generic recall recorder business, but you can get really, really detailed into what you want um, the residents to be able to pick from. Birth certificates, death certificate, marriage license, RV application, boat license, whatever it might be. They'll put in their first name, last name, and, and mobile phone number. They can also add an email address. We just added email functionality about two weeks ago. And then they'll make an appointment for the day and time that works for them. So here you can see for Dubuque County, the next available appointment for the recorder's office isn't until September 14th. Um, they have a schedule in place where they're able, they're allowing their residents to book 20 days in advance. You could make that whatever you want. They'll pick their time slot, they'll click the box, and then they will receive a phone call and text message before their appointment. So how does the whole system work? Um, if I'm going to make an appointment with any one of your counties or any of the counties that are on this call, I would receive a phone call and text message before my appointment, probably an hour before my appointment. In that text message I get, there's going to be a small hyperlink uh, that I'm going to click on when I arrive at the county building, when I'm standing outside social distancing up on the sidewalk, whatever that might be. And I'm going to click on that link when, I, when I've arrived. That's going to let the folks inside know that I am ready for service. And now when the staff inside says that it's safe for me to come inside, if the counter is wiped down, if the last person who had service has now left the building or is about to leave the building, they can place a phone call and text message through the application that's gonna let me know it's safe to come inside with specific instructions about where to go and how to get there. On the left-hand side here, you're gonna see that text message. Uh, in blue is that hyperlink that you would click on to, uh, to alert the staff that it is safe to come inside. On the right-hand side, you'll see a mobile device web page, which would show you where you were in the queue in real time. If you were to refresh that mobile page, you would see the number would go down from three, two, one, and then you'd be the next one to be called inside. What are we trying to do here? We're trying to get people to orderly return to a new normal. We're reducing their anxiety about coming into our offices. We're reducing the infection risk because we're not having them um, in one place with multiple people for more than 15 minutes, and we're increasing customer satisfaction. I do want to show a demo of our software. I'm going to show a live demo right now. Let me just switch over to my screen. Um, as you can see, um, and as I mentioned earlier, our application is, um, uh, you can get to it from any of the major browsers out there right now. Chrome is the best right now. Firefox also works incredibly well. We also have support in Safari if there are any Mac users out there. Um, Internet Explorer and Edge both have some functionality, but by far Chrome and Firefox and Safari are the best to use. 
What I'm going to do right now on our dashboard is I want to show you a real life demo of how the system works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an appointment for myself. Like I said, uh, first name, last name, I'll put in my phone number. And I'm going to pick the location of my appointment. In our example, we're going to use the, the Plymouth DMV. Uh, our co-founder, Jeff, is located in Minneapolis, so this is the first one we did. Um, and I'm going to give myself a road test today. As you can see here, we have a little calendar button. I can choose what day I want. Right now in our demo environment, we're set up for anything five, you can make an appointment five days in advance. Anything in blue is available. Anything in an X is not available, okay? So we'll go back to September 2nd. We will pick my time slot, which I'll pick the later one just so I can keep talking, is 1.30. Now, this is an example of someone within our county buildings who are making who is making an appointment for someone who calls in or maybe someone who walks in and we're the ones making the appointment. I will show you soon um, uh, an appointment if you are going to make it uh, externally. OK, so yeah, I put in all the information here. I can add a note in here as well. I'll show you where that note shows up. David has, whoops, has all his proper paperwork. All right, I'll show you where that comes up. Um, I also have the option uh, to click on this little button here. No mobile phone will be in the lobby. If I click on this, this will alert the staff inside that I don't have a phone. And therefore, someone from the county, maybe it's a, a deputy or a police officer who's maybe down in the lobby um, working security, might have to come outside and say, Mr. Waxburg, it's your time for service. And that's because I don't have a phone. Uh, we do work with some rural counties in, in both Iowa and Pennsylvania and in New York and across the country where folks either don't have mobile phones, don't have smartphones, um, don't want to use mobile phones. Um, and so we have this option here as well. Now, what we also put in place just a couple of weeks ago, and this is where it's really, really powerful, is something we're calling screening questions. I'm going to dig into this a little bit more, but I want to talk about this first. These screening questions can be asked in a multiple number of ways. They can be asked before an appointment is even allowed to be made. You can ask these questions after an appointment is made, and you can ask these questions before someone even walks in the door. Here, the way we have it set up is we have some pre-screening questions. One of the questions is, have you had COVID-19 in the last 14 days? If I answer yes, there's a box that's going to come up and say, I can't make my appointment, OK? So there's logic built in here um, to alert the system that if you answer in a certain way, it will not allow you to make an appointment. I'm going to answer no. Do I have all the required documents? Do I have any special needs that I want to talk about? This is a nice way for one of your customers to say specifically what they're coming in to look at. Um, I need to um, dispute my land value, right? Maybe they're coming into the assessor's office. Do you live in Plymouth? Yes. All right. When I click save on here, I'm going to get a phone call and text message on my phone. I'm going to uh, put it on speakerphone so everyone on the call can hear. Um, and here we go. A reminder for your 1.30 p.m. appointment. After this call, you will receive a text message with a link to click when you arrive at our facility. Once you arrive, Please click the link and stay in your car or wait outside until we are ready for you. Once we are ready, we will provide you further instructions. Thanks. Now, that was the first phone call. I'm going to, uh, I should be getting a text message in just a second. And that text message says, when you arrive for your 1.30 p.m. appointment, click on this link so we know you're here. Please stay in your car outside until we text you. We are ready for you. Thank you. So that is on my phone, and all of this that you just heard and saw is fully customizable for whatever department you're looking for. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on that link, and you can see what actually happens on my screen. I'm just unmute my, my site here. Click on that link. I'm going to do one thing real quick. All right, let's try this one more time. There we go. Okay. Now, as you can see, my 
my tile is turned orange, there was a little bell sound as well, a doorbell there. That alerts the staff inside that I am waiting outside. Um, as you can see, there's also a timer here, so you know that, um, that someone is waiting. What I can do here is I can send an acknowledgement text message by clicking on this button right here, acknowledge. And I'll read you that text message I get as soon as I get it. That message says, David, we know you are here. We will let you know as soon as we are ready for you. Thank you. So it's a nice way to have this communication with you and the resident. So the resident knows that someone inside knows that they're there and is going to be waiting. What I'll do now is I'm going to call myself into the office uh, by pressing on this button. We'll get one more phone call and one more text message. We are ready for you inside. Please come inside the building. Go down the stairs. And we are the third window on the left. Thanks. All right, and we'll wait for one more text message. The text message on purpose comes after the phone call. The reason is we there is a lot of good information that the phone call is going to have, and therefore if the text came in during the phone call, people might get distracted, and then they would forget to even, um, they forget they were on a phone call, look at the text message, and there'd be a little bit of confusion. The text message says, David, we are ready for you inside. Please come inside the building, go down the stairs, and we are the third window on the left. Thanks. Again, all of that's fully customizable. We know that the treasurer's office might be up the stairs to the left, but the recorder's office could be down the stairs to the right. And so all of this is fully customizable. I do wanna spend a little bit of time walking you through the dashboard, but as you can see, we were able to socially distance myself from other employees, other customers. We are able to do that all through this dashboard. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is the tile for my appointment. I'll walk you through a few things here. The note that I put in earlier, David has all his proper paperwork right that's where that is next to it are the screening questions so the folks with access to this can see what people are coming in to do uh, or the questions that they that they were that got answered uh, and i could see here that i need to dispute my land value right so that way um, i know that i can either assign it to somebody or that i'm more prepared for that person as well uh, within each person's appointment you have a myriad number of options here in the edit appointment option, if someone was, um, let's say they didn't need a road test, it was really a license, you can move their pool or you can move the service as well. You can see a list of their screening questions. You can see what notes were they have. You can review an audit log so you can see what the status it was, what it changed to, what time it was done, and what IP address it was done from. Mostly for the IT folks who, need to, who might wanna know this as well. You can also see all of the messages that were sent to me uh, or your customer and what time they were sent. Uh, within the appointment, you can close it, you can cancel it, you can resend the arrival link, you can see their notes, you can send another custom message if you wanted to, so a lot of options there. Another nice thing is we know that some county government offices, some departments get overwhelmed, they get backed up, and they just are not able to service all their customers. You have the option here to close your pool, which means that no more appointments will be able to be made during that day. Okay, it's also very easy, so once you get caught back up and your staff is ready to take more customers, you can open it back up and people are able to book appointments again. You also uh, can uh, send a message to everybody who might be waiting. Let's say we just click on, let's say there's multiple people here. You can click on, on my name and say, uh, we are running late. Please be patient. You can send it by text message, by phone or both. If you choose both, use this button to copy the message and press send, that easy. Uh, you can see how many appointments you have. You can see how many have arrived, how many you've acknowledged. You have the option to see the other days in the week or any day within the calendar period. You have the option to search up here as well. That's our dashboard. Another really useful tool is our appointments page. Uh, this has the name, the phone number, the location, the pool, the appointment date, the created date, and the status. As you remember, uh, my last status was advised to come inside. You have the option here to um, to make any changes just like you did before on, on the dashboard. And you can see um, here you have the ability to search for people's appointments. So if I wanted to search for my appointments, you can see here, these are all of my appointments. I do plenty of these demos. So I have a lot of appointments that I've made for myself. So you have all of these demos that you can see. Also, this is fully exportable either into a PDF or into Excel. So at the beginning of the day, if you wanted to see who the appointment was, or even once an hour, you wanted to see what appointments were coming up later on in the day, you can export this into Excel, print it out and have it uh, for your staff uh, there as well. So um, that's our dashboard, that's our appointments. Um, I wanna talk about more, I wanna get into the settings and really how do we customize this um, for each of our different counties. Uh, a lot of this work is done by your county staff. 
your county knows uh, your departments and your buildings better than anyone else. And so uh, I am on board for the implementation process and for getting everything set up with you. But really that process uh, is really honed in by your IT staff and all the different department heads and elected officials. In our settings, we have uh, the top portion is the information about the county or about the, the, the town or the city or the organization, whatever it might be. Down here, you have access to these reminders. Um, these reminders that we're starting to set up, these can be considered organizational defaults. And what that means is these, this is, these are the, the parent settings, but each of the different departments that use our system can make their own settings, their own messages, their own screening questions, okay? We're just starting to set up the parent information. So here you have access or you have the ability to um, send a reminder time before the appointment. You can set that up for 15 minutes before the appointment or an hour before the appointment. You can say um, how many days in advance do you want someone to make a time slot appointment? Uh, how long can, how, how late can someone be before their appointment is, is canceled? That's the grace time. Um, you can say how far in advance can they make an appointment in minutes? So it's 121. I can make a 122 appointment right now because the time is at zero. Uh, if I said it was a 60 minute window before I can make an appointment, I couldn't make an appointment probably until about 2.30 this afternoon, all right? So that's all up to you. We have the ability to anonymize the appointment data and you can anonymize the data at multiple different stages within the appointment. The reason we brought this on board is because of the California partners that we're working with. They have incredibly strict privacy rules. Uh, and so we built this functionality for them. And we also have decided to bring it to all of our counties as well, all of our customers. As I promised before, this is the website here. This is the booking URL that you would use if you were going to make an appointment externally, right? If I'm a customer of Dubuque County, any county in Iowa, I need to go get service. I can pick my location, pick the DMV. I'll pick my service. I'll put in my first name, my last name, my phone number. Again, I can pick the day and time of my appointment. And then here, here are our screening questions again. Same thing before, that logic still, uh, still exists here. Have you had COVID-19 in the last 14 days? If I answer yes, I cannot make an appointment, okay? Excuse me, that is how you make an appointment from, uh, from, from external. We also have the ability to uh, enable uh, CAPTCHA. This is Google's, uh, this is the latest Google version of CAPTCHA, which um, fights bots and spam. Uh, we have over 70 customers now. None of them have had any problem um, in the last, as, as long as we've had the system up and running since April, uh, no one's had any problems with um, uh, fake appointments or, spa or, or spam or bots. Message configuration, this is where we really start to dig into the customization. Here at the top, you'll see that there's a legend on how you can send dynamic messages. If you put um, uh, a bracket and then first name in or bracket and last name, whatever it might be, then um, that person's first name, last name, date, time, or appointment with will be, um, will be added to the message. You'll see here we have email functionality as well. All of these options here will look exactly like Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, Outlook, right? All of that functionality is here for you. In, uh, indenting paragraphs, uh, subscripts, superscripts, different fonts, bold, italics, underlines, all of that is there for you. You can also include a calendar invite as an attachment within the email so people can add that to their uh, iPhone calendar, their Android calendar, or Outlook, or whatever it might be. When it comes to the appointment reminder, um, you know, it's very easy. You can choose how you want that message to be sent. Um, and then in here, you can see what the message would be. When I got that phone call, it said, this is a reminder for your 130 appointment and so on and so forth. Again, all of this is fully customizable. On to our screening questions. There's a few ways to think about screening questions. Um, the county might have screening questions that it wants all the different departments to, to ask, right? It could be COVID screening questions that the county wants everyone to ask. But each of the different departments might have their own questions that they want, to, that they want asked. And then even further, the service type that's requested might even have their own specific questions. So someone who's going to jury duty shouldn't be asked the same question for someone who needs a marriage license. And so that's, a, that's available to you in the screening questions. We'll dig a little bit further into that soon. But here, how to edit your screening questions. You can see here, you can choose pre-question, post, or check-in. This is before the appointment's made, after the appointment is made, or at check-in. You have a different way to answer it. You could, they can either have the text box where they have free form way of typing, a yes or a no, 
a drop down list that you that you enable or a file upload. They can upload audio files, video files, PDFs, any document. We do have virus scanning for any document that's uploaded to uh, to check for viruses. Only document you can upload is an executable uh, file for obvious reasons. Uh, here's the logic included here. So have you had COVID-19 in the last 14 days? If you answer no, you're allowed to make the appointment. If you answer yes, you are not allowed to make the appointment. Okay. You can also reorder these very easily by dragging and dropping. And that, that so far are our settings. We're going to dig a little bit more into them when we get into each of the different locations. For our schedule, I mentioned before we had a first in, first out or a time slot. Uh, in uh, in your county, when you implement, you can have as many schedules as you want. Here we have a few templates. I'll show you the first time slot template right now. Um, the first one here, you'll name it um, however you want it, want it to be named. You'll choose the time the, the time block option. You'll have your start date and your end date. And then here's a lot of the information here. So on Sunday from 1 a.m. to 10 p.m., we're allowing two appointments every 15 minutes. This is fully customizable to what you want. If you have four windows and each appointment takes 10 minutes, then the appointment count is four appointments every 10 minutes, right? And it's fully up to you. If you're if you are issuing a real ID and that's taking 45 minutes, maybe it's one appointment every 45 minutes, whatever that might be, right? You also have the option to uh, have multiple schedules in a day to account for either lunches, to account for the fact that maybe you have more staff in the morning versus the afternoon, so you have to change your appointment count, you have the option to do that as well here. First in, first out schedule, it's exactly the same. The only difference is you're not saying how many appointments you have, you're just saying when can someone get in line to get service. Here we're saying at 1 a.m. to 8 p.m., you can get in line. If it's before 1 a.m. or after 8 p.m., you can't get in line, the, the line is closed. This might be a good way to think about voting. We know that if anyone is in line, um, let's say by eight o'clock at night, anyone who gets in line by eight can vote, but anyone who gets in line after that can't vote, right? We, there's, that, there's that theory there as well. For closure schedule, we know that our county offices, we know that a lot of our city offices are closed on the major holidays. So here, what you can do is you can set out those days ahead of time of when you're gonna be closed where people can't make an appointment. The next major holiday is, is Labor Day on Monday, so we know that we're closed on Labor Day. If, for instance, you are closed uh, a partial day on, let's say, Christmas Eve or maybe New Year's Eve, you can say what the hours are that you're closed right here from noon to five, and then no one can make an appointment uh, 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 between that time. Now, where everything sort of starts to come together is in locations. Locations can also be considered departments. You can have uh, as many departments as you want, as many locations as you want. If you are a, uh, a larger county, a mid-sized or larger county where you have multiple offices across the county, you can put that here as well because we also have the address here. Um, so for instance, let's just stick with our DMV example for the Plymouth DMV. Excuse me. Um, you'll see here, this is very, very similar to our settings that we were talking about before here on the left-hand side. This is now the settings for the Plymouth DMV, this department. They're gonna have their own URL. So remember, there was a URL for the main page, and then each department is gonna have their own link that you can click on for their department. Now here we have the organizational defaults turned on. You can see everything here is grayed out. As soon as I turn this off, now this department is able to start making changes to these reminders that we had set up before. All right, and this department also has the ability to anonymize their appointment data. All right, we'll leave the organizational defaults on for now. But now also this department can change their messaging. You can bring the messages over from the organizational settings or they can make up their own for th that work for them. As I mentioned before, screening questions, what we did is we brought the organizational questions over to the location. We can turn them on and off here if we want to. Right. And then this location, the Plymouth DMV, has its own question. It's asking, do you live in Plymouth? This department, that's an important question that, that is asked for this uh, for this department. Right. And then you can go even further in for each of the different service types that are requested. And you edit them the exact same way we did before in our in our settings. When it comes to our pools, the, this, these are um, the services that can be requested at the from that department. So from the Plymouth DMV, we know that we can make, uh, we can go in and get a driver's license, we can schedule a road test. There's also miscellaneous services. 
Within each of those pools, there's even further customization you can do. You can have um, any schedule that you want in here. Remember, we made schedules before in our schedule um, uh, tab over here on the left-hand side. You can pick any of those schedules that work here. The nice thing is, remember, this is a first-in, first-out schedule for the license. Our road test is using a time slot schedule. All right, so even different services within a department can have different schedules. We'll go back to our license. You have the option to make your schedule non-public, which means that only the folks inside the, um, uh, inside the building or folks that have access to the database uh, will be able to make appointments. You have the option for curbside settings. So if there are departments that are going to be bringing uh, documentation out to someone's car, what you can do is you can um, show the type of vehicle they have, the color of the vehicle, and even the parking spot number that they're in. Okay, turn that off. Um, again, screening questions all the way down to the service type you can ask. And again, these were the questions we brought over from the organization level and from the location level. All right, so you have all that access. One final thing on pools is service list. What this allows you to do is it allows you to take up back-to-back -back appointments if uh, the number of items that you need from this service is more than one. So for instance, if I come in to get a passport, it might be 10 minutes. But if I come in with my wife and my daughter, it's more than 10 minutes, it's probably closer to 30 minutes. So I might pick three time slots to take up. That way you're not double booking yourself. It's a nice way to even, for, uh, even more customize um, uh, the appointment information. Those are our, that's our locations. For our users here, uh, this is where you're going to allow or not allow access to uh, different locations for different people within each of your county um, offices. What we normally have is we have someone from IT, information technology or information services. They're usually listed as one of our admins. Our admin is able to uh, review and change any of the information here on the left, and they can change any of the locations that are out there um, for that county. Our manager here is usually a department head or an elected official. They have access to change anything for the, uh, for the locations that they have permissions to. So for instance, the recorder has access to the recorder's information, but not the treasurer's information, or the auditor, or the assessor, or DMV, right? It's almost like siloed off there. Our users will only have access to the dashboard and the appointments data. They cannot change anything um, in terms of the messages, the screening questions, anything like that. Let me just show you right here how easy it is to add location permissions. This is my, uh, this is my um, uh, profile. I have access to these different locations. I can give my, because I'm an admin, I can give myself access to even more, more locations if I wanted to. That's how easy it is to check them off uh, either yes or no. Finally, one more thing before we talk about um, uh, our, our pricing and, and before we get to the Q&A. This is something we just launched a few weeks ago. This is our stats report. This is real-time data. You can see how many customers you've served, how many phone calls you've sent, how many text messages, how many emails, the number of appointments. And you can go by location, you can go by pool, you can check from one day to another, and it's very easy to do. You can also export this into PDF or Excel. You have access to our summary report, which is a really nice way at the end of the month to reconcile the books. How many text messages, voice, um, uh, phone calls, or emails did the assessor send? Did the clerk send? Did the voting location send? This way you can determine, for budget purposes, who owes what to, uh, to probably the assessor or the treasurer um, uh, about what they owe for the month. Um, that is basically our entire system. It's pretty intuitive. The nice Thing about our system is there's no app that needs to be downloaded by either the county or from the citizen. Uh, there's no contract, there's no termination fee, there's no activation fee. Our pricing is pretty simple. The basic system that we have in place that I showed you today is $49 per month, okay? If you want the screening questions also, that's an additional $99 per month. So if you want the whole package, it's $148 per month. You can either do base package or you can do the base package plus screening questions. The, um, the variability here is in the messages. Messages are phone calls, text messages, or emails. Each one of those is five cents. So I sent myself two phone calls and three text messages. Yep, I think that's what I did. So that would have cost me 25, not me, the county. Um, it would have cost the county 25 cents to have my appointment come through the building. The minimum number you need to have is at least two. You could have even more than that. 
Um, so we are, uh, we're really excited to be working with the counties in Iowa, the testing sites. We're excited to be partnering with, um, with uh, the Iowa State Association of Counties. We would love to partner with all of you um, to help uh, reopen. Uh, if, if you are open, we're, we're really happy to help continue for you to be open and safely serve your customers. Um, it, our presentation is pretty is pretty open. Um, we would love to answer some questions if you have any. Uh, I would also be happy to do this demo again for any of you with uh, anyone from your IT department, any other elected officials or department heads, anyone else we need to do this in front of, I'm, I'm happy to do that um, or answer any questions that you have right now. We did have a couple questions, one about reminders and one about screening questions, but you already covered those. So I think that we are good. Um, we actually just had another come through that said, how many users per monthly fee? Sure, that's a great question. Thank you. So the nice thing about our, our pricing is it's a blanket pricing. Mike and Jeff, our two co-founders, um, they have been in the government software uh, technology space for almost 20, 25 years. Jeff, our co-founder, was a police officer in the Twin Cities, so he has been in law enforcement and government for a long time, and he understands how to price this software. The $49 price point is an unlimited number of users and an unlimited number of departments, all right? Um, you might find that some vendors that, that are out there um, uh, uh, have um, tiered pricing in terms of how many users, one to five is this much and five to 20 is this much and further on you get more expensive. Our pricing is very simple. $49 a month for the base package, $99 additional for screening and then five cents per message. Well, at this time, we don't have um, any more questions, but as always, if any questions do come up, please feel free to actually, we just had some come in. Sorry, one moment. Um, do you get any sort of discount since you are using a picture of our courthouse on your website? I'm sorry, can you ask that one more time? It looks like someone asked if they got a discount since um, you're using a picture of their courthouse on your website. No, there's no discount for using a picture of the courthouse on the website. Can you split the message fee by office? When you say, um, I don't know exactly what that question entails for splitting the fee. You mean like someone pays two and a half cents and someone else pays two and a half cents? Um, they didn't give specifics. Um, in terms of the billing, that's going to be, and if, if you could just, if that person could maybe clarify that question a little bit further. Um, in terms of billing, that's all done internally from, uh, from the county side, right? We don't have anything to do, I mean, we bill the county and then within the county, you bill each other's departments for or the usage that you have. Gotcha. And then um, someone asked about support services and if there's a maintenance package. Sure. Um, we actually have just we just increased our pricing to what you what I just mentioned before. We do have a price list that does include um, additional support packaging, email support, phone support, additional implementation calls, additional support calls, things like that. Um, if anyone's interested, I can share that pricing with you. I don't have that on me just now, um, but I can share that at, at, uh, after this. And that's all the questions that I see coming through at this time. Okay, again, I thank everyone for being on this call. My information is here on this slide. If you have any questions, if we need to do another demo, if you wanna have a phone call, if you just wanna text me and say how great this presentation was, you can do that as well. Um, uh, I look forward to working with as many of you as we possibly can. Uh, and if, again, if you have any questions, just please let me know. All right, thanks for joining us, everyone. And thank you, David. Thanks, everyone.